of Aries. So right now the moon is at 23.2% illumination in the sign of Cancer, headed towards that half moon in Leo on the 15th. I think I mistakenly said the 13th yesterday in my other reading. So if I have cross watchers or anything that have seen yesterday's reading, I stand corrected. Okay. Uh, so, and I'm corrected myself. Um, we are using my Starseed Oracle deck today instead of my Mystic Martian, which I typically use for the beginning of my readings. We're switching it up. Okay. <clears throat> New cycle who dates. So let's see who you are. And I know what your vibe is right now. Do like a little energy check in. blue flame spontaneous awakening activation and integration time so i love this the blue flame if you notice uh hints of pink in the background it kind of reminds me of like really tapping into that masculine energy while the the feminine energy is also going to be present in all of us doesn't matter what your gender is you can't escape it <laughs> we all uh, both <laughs> and uh but it feels like right now you're really tapping in, tapping into that that masculine energy which is very like strategic organized leadership you know uh kind of energy <laughs> so let's see what this means for you and also you're in aries aries is represented by the emperor in uh tarot the emperor is the ultimate divine masculine right your divine masculine sign um whether regardless of your gender right i think uh you know we kind of screwed up the idea of masculine and feminine when we started incorporating gender roles on people right because obviously you can't put us in boxes right we're not gonna fit like that <laughs> We're not box shaped. <laughs> um, so, let's see. What do you need to hear today? Um, you're integrating. I feel that integration time really speaks to integrating the shadow and really seeing the benefit of, you know, being fully yourself, right? With the ego. Um, as part of yourself, right? We've got to have our lower and higher self. We can't just have our higher, our, our higher self and just forget about the lower self, right? It's like wanting to be all crown chakra and ignoring the root chakra, right? As above, so below. As your higher self evolves, your lower self evolves also, right? The ego can evolve and mature and it can actually be work in your favor rather than against you, right? And I feel that this is something that you're coming to understand. Uh, I have a deep kinship with Aries. Um, as an Aquarius, I feel that it, there are a lot of similarities between the air and the fire signs. In the same way that I feel that there are a lot of similarities with the earth and water signs, you know, there's a kinship there, like air helps fire to grow, right? In the same way that water helps earth to grow. So let's see what you need to hear today. Oh, shit. Okay. So we're just starting like this. Okay. Uh, so we're starting with a blasted tower, right? And this could be something that you're currently experiencing or that you're coming out of. Let's talk about it, though. Let's talk about it. 
freaking there so the blasted tower gets a bad rap right it's like people see the tower and they're automatically like oh my god no but i see it as a welcome release right because in the tower there's no doorway <laughs> and, um, there's no doorway to the tower so in order to escape the imprisonment of the tower it must explode right and you see these people flying out but they're flying into water right and that's where they're finding their freedom i see the tower is a welcome release because some things need to fall apart certain dynamics need to fall apart certain narratives need to fall apart um certain structures need to fall apart right so there is something very welcome about the tower that which is out of alignment with you must go right and that's what we're seeing with this tower so let's get to the nitty gritty let's see like what's falling apart here right um don't don't fear it right and it's cool because like i see the tree of life on both sides right the Kabbalion tree of life and one is light and one is dark and that's the integration of the light and the shadow together you cannot be completely yourself without both right and i feel that this is a powerful rebirth for you What's well, coming apart? So it looks like with the moon, Pisces energy, something is discovered, right? Something is coming to light. Something is exposed here. With the Nine of Wands, whatever this is, it leaves you feeling wounded, right? It hurts. It sucks. Whatever this is. Um, I do like your response to it, though. And I will get to that. Your response is the Five of Swords in reverse. Right? And that is, you're not like getting super reactive right like a fire sign typically would you're not you know jump into the fight uh also i see this like energy of you're not super defensive about it perhaps that's because you're not the one that needs to be defensive in this situation right uh <clears throat> I see that there's a struggle because with the Eight of Cups in reverse, there, like Eight of Cups in the upright is about walking away from something that you've invested a lot of time and energy into. Um, and with that in reverse, there's a, a reluctance to walk away, right? There's a reluctance. And this does disrupt your feminine energy too. because that can create like creative blocks right the feminine is all about creativity and so there could be creative blocks or emotional blocks with the empress in reverse this could be somebody that you once viewed as the empress right this is maternal energy um in the upright i should say right in the upright the empress represents like the divine mother she is fair and compassionate warm strong she represents like that divine feminine power right and with that in reverse i'm seeing that you could be dealing with somebody that you once perceived in that light but you're seeing them in a new light right with that moon energy coming out it's like you're seeing them different uh where you once saw them as somebody who could balance the scales now you're seeing them as somebody who's creating imbalance in your life and this could be a boss a mom 
a lover, a friend, family member, you know, take it as it resonates. <clears throat> but this is somebody that you feel wounded by, but there's still this reluctance to walk away and to close the door. Why? Aries aren't typically that forgiving. <laughs> I gotta be honest, bro. Like, you guys can hold the grudge. <laughs> so, why? With the Eight of Cups in reverse, let's clarify that. With the High Priestess, Pisces energy, there's strong Pisces energy on the board here, but you're following your intuition. Your intuition is telling you not yet. This could be a job. With the Seven of Pentacles in reverse, there could be, like, you're looking for a different opportunity, right? It's like, there could be a financial reason that you're kind of like, okay, I gotta stay stuck here for now, right? But that's just for now. It's not... You know, I feel that they're, through following your intuition, you're going to find a way out. Um, <clears throat> right now, you, I feel that there could be a lot of loss, right, associated with walking away immediately. And that's something that you're trying to prevent, right? Like, it could be house, car, job situation, right? Where you're like, I can't leave immediately. There are reasons like, that you cannot leave immediately. I see that. Um, so, when you're following your intuition, like, you know, right? You know. So, how would the divine tell you to proceed at this time? <clears throat> I'm hearing networking. Maybe that was the answer. <laughs> uh, let's see. divine would tell you to walk away with the six of swords um that is your advice and with the devil in reverse also your advice is to let go of the toxic people behaviors you know um energies around you so i know it's easier said than done so let's see what exactly this means right Cause six of swords is like feeling very guarded and walking away, right? But if you notice it, it looks like this flower is seen, like it almost looks like an eyeball, right? And it's curtains are coming open and it's seeing a situation and it's like, I'm feeling. That you're, you're really being called to, to leave something behind here. All right, to let the tower fall, to not be afraid to let the tower fall. You have options, even if they're hard to see. With the Ace of Cups, right, it's telling you to give yourself love and attention at this time, right? Ace of Cups is the beginning of, of a new love cycle. It always starts with you, though, right? It always starts with filling your own cup. All right, now that's a big piece of your advice. With the devil in reverse too, there could be a connection to some kind of addiction or obsession or, uh, you know, toxic people. <laughs> so, but what keeps you so trapped, right? 
Seven of Cups in reverse. Feeling like there may not be other options, right? There's a heavy focus on this, like, fear of not having other options. And with the Five of Cups, this is feeling left out in the cold. This fear of being left out in the cold. This lack of mindset that needs to be overcome, right? And one thing that I've learned in my life is that... If you focus on the problem, you're going to get more problems, right? You're manifesting more problems because that's where your attention is going. If you focus on solutions, you're going to get more solutions because that's where your attention's going. And so I feel that at this time, you need to stop thinking about what you're losing and think about where you want to go, right? Like make a map out of it. Um... And I think, like, oh, you know, there was this quote I, I heard the other day, and I even included it in one of my videos, but it says that worrying about the problem is like worshiping the problem. <laughs> and damn, right? Like, are, are we really going to sit here and worship the problem? And I know that it's hard to change the way that you think of things. Uh, believe me, I'm a fixed sign. I know. So, but it's not impossible. If you want everything to change, change everything. And I took that quote very literally, right? When I heard it from Do Dr. Joe Dispenza. So I stopped listening to the music I was listening to, right? Even though it was my favorite, right? It was a big metal head, punk rock, all that. I loved it. However... <laughs> Um, when I switched it up and I started listening to classical music, right? The very opposite. Um, I started lucid dreaming like a lot, right? I felt this, this deeper connection to my subconscious. Um, my manifestations started popping through fast, right? Like right now, the place I'm in, this is a place I manifested, right? I wanted it exactly as it is. Um, and, you know, there were little setbacks, of course, in, in that. But this is the life I chose for myself. This is the life that I was like, this is my life, right? Um... The, you know, everything about my life is an answer to my prayer. And that's, you know, and I used to be the strongest naysayer when it came to manifestation. I'm like, how? How is that going to work? And then I learned a lot about quantum entanglement and quantum physics, and it does fucking work, and it's crazy how it works, right? started listening to affirmations when I wake up in the morning and when I go to bed at night. We call affirmations scientific prayers, right? Because you're not praying to God, begging God for everything. It's about being in a state of gratitude in which allows you to manifest everything that you want, right? Because you're in the mindset of being so grateful for all that you already have that the universe is like you know what? I want to give you more to be grateful for because the universe has like a, a praise kink right <laughs> the universe has a praise kink if you start praising the universe if you're if you worship gratitude the same way that you're worshiping your problems I guarantee you shit's gonna start turning around right and so whenever I find myself frustrated and overwhelmed or whatever, I say thank you rather than allowing it to fester, right? I say thank you for this opportunity to grow and learn. Um, and things resolve so much faster than they have before when, you know, before I started these practices. But the Ace of Wands in reverse... Part of your advice, too, is to not jump into, like, if you're leaving a relationship, right? Um, because the Seven of Cups in reverse is here, which tells me that a big reason that you're not leaving could be romantic options, right? 
With the Ace of Wands in reverse, I see that your focus should not be jumping into the next bed, situation, ship, whatever, right? Ace of Wands is like a passionate new beginning, and it, it's kind of a lusty energy, right? It, it is a phallic symbol, the Ace of Wands. Um, and so with that in reverse, I feel that, you know, maybe taking a time out from exercising the root chakra <laughs> trying to say this in like the most pc way possible you know like maybe taking a time out from like partners and sex and things like that if that is what you're walking away from um might be a good idea you know to just you know, give to yourself with that Ace of Cups rather than seeking to give to others in that way, you know. With the Temperance in Reverse, Sagittarius in Reverse. I'm, I'm hearing time is up, right? Because Temperance is all about divine timing. It's about patience. It's about waiting for things, and I feel that you need to stop sitting around waiting for solutions to fall into your lap, and you need to start creating solutions. You need to start looking for different ways, right? Like, if this is a job situation, get on that job hunt. And if you're stuck with a partner because of money reasons you need to start looking at other options in that regard right like getting a roommate or whatever i know that there are options out there <laughs> um you must only look and you'll find right and so um, i feel that right now you're being called to not just sit around and wait and to not just like sit in the misery right you're you're being called to action in some way you're being called to walk away from something with that six of swords why don't you ask for the door to be open right i know for me anytime i'm like like for example uh when i was leaving my ex-husband i remember just sitting there and being like universe god all y'all <laughs> spirit team ancestors all the people <laughs> all the things like i need a way out right now and i need answers right now i don't have time to be sitting around waiting um because i need this door closed and i need it hermetically sealed not to be opened again right and it was days right it happens a lot faster than you realize because one minute you're sitting there praying about it and the next minute bam doors are opening and you gotta just start going right you gotta just start going through them trusting the process not allowing fear to hold you back right because fear will <laughs> it will if you let it and you know there's and especially when it's a big scary thing to walk away from something that is so familiar and so comfortable right because the devils we know are easier to deal with than the devils we don't right um and sometimes you'll look at the opportunity and you'll be like i don't know about that and but then that opportunity will present itself again right because i remember I rejected going to um to my sisters at first. I was like, you guys don't have room for me, da 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 and I rejected it at first. So I was like, I, you know, I don't wanna put you guys out, da da da. And then but the opportunity was like stayed open, right? And so I went inevitably <laughs> after a lot of um fighting the universe there was just a point where I was like I literally have no other choice and so I went and despite my reluctance you know despite my fears my doubts 
and honestly it ended up being one of the best things I ever did and I opened up the door to where am I now I have no roommates <laughs> right I'm able to you know um be more self-sufficient and it's funny because it was my own kid <laughs> this kid's a wise man it was my own kid because he's like mom i know you don't like getting help but you know sometimes you're gonna have to accept help i know you want to do it all on your own and i'm like oh my god <laughs> you know? and man the wisdom that comes out of children you know <laughs> And I needed that. I needed that because my pride, my ego was like, no, I'm not accepting help. I'm doing it all on my own, <laughs> you know. But, you know, my kid helped me to put my ego aside and to do the right thing, even though it was the hardest thing, right? The right thing is always the hardest thing. And, um, and I'm grateful for that, you know. I'm grateful I made that choice. Even though it was a blow to my ego, and even though I was there a lot longer than I anticipated, um, I was safe. I had shelter, food in my belly. <laughs> my kids were taken care of. Shit was okay, you know. It wasn't like my favorite <laughs> to have to go through that, you know, to have to rely on other people. However, I think it's important to have those moments too because. When you're down and out and you have nothing, that's when you learn who's really on your side, right? Who's really there to really help you, to pick you up in the dark times, to, to pull you in the right direction. And for that, like, you know, I know that, I know that she's forever on my team, right? No matter like how far away, we're we are from each other or whatever you know i know that that's you know now we've gone through the <laughs> the trenches together you know um and i i really needed that and i needed that for me because i also needed to know that not everyone's a piece of shit that not everybody is out to just take from you that there are some people who genuinely just want to see you doing okay in life and they will do what they can to help you through that and and I think that we have to experience these moments where we do um you know accept help so that we can really see who is on our side and who's helping us right who doesn't want to see us kicked down by life <laughs> time and time again you know so if help shows up don't reject it don't let your pride you know get in the way of that <laughs> and if it's something that you're supposed to do that you're inevitably bound to do and it doesn't matter if you reject it because that option is going to come right back around <laughs> when you need it <laughs> Yeah, Knight of Swords, I do see inevitably in your near future, you will be taking action and going in a new direction. Um, and I, I love this for you, right? He's guided by the Northern Star. And I love that the Northern Star has angel wings too, <laughs> you know? Because it's, it really, it's so symbolic of, you know, that light that guides you is that divine light. All right, follow your int your intuition with that high priestess energy. Let yourself be guided. With the justice, Libra energy showing up, I do see balance and a restoration of karmic balance, you know. And you see the yin and the yang, right? And it comes back to that energy, right? Uh, like I saw in the Blasted Tower, right, with the Kabbalah Tree of Life where it's, you know, the light and dark version of that. I do see an integration of the light and dark inside of you, the higher, the lower self. And I feel that what you're experiencing now, even if it might feel like a lot, and it might feel like a lot of, or like very challenging, I feel that this is ultimately leading you to an outcome that is just beyond, um... 
beyond what you can even expect or, or visualize at this time, you're going to find that peace, that justice. Um, and it's funny because this, uh, this, oh, well, here, let me pull this down so you can see it kind of, but right here it says La Justice on my, uh, on my altar cloth. So heavy on that energy of justice being restored here getting justice in your situation if you have to go through a court situation this is a positive omen that things will work out in your favor and that things will be you know restored for you all right seeing the justice right after the blasted towers such a beautiful like sign <laughs> that you know Though it might feel turbulent and like things are rocky and, you know, things will, you know, balance themselves out. You just gotta trust the process. And I know you probably heard that so many times and you're like, <laughs> I feel it. I feel you going, um, but I guarantee you, like, if you just go with the flow of it, things will work out. And, you know, don't worry about things that you literally can't do anything about in, in the moment. One thing I've learned is, like, you know, like, for example, if it's a court thing, like, you know, do things that in your present moment to prepare yourself for that, but don't worry about the outcome. Just worry about preparing yourself right getting what you need in order doing all that stuff um prepare yourself um but then don't sit there and dwell and go in circles in your head and talking to people in circles about the problem because then you'll just perpetuate more problems right so the warning here is like be very conscientious of your speech and your thoughts at this time how you think how you talk that's going to be very important if you notice yourself obsessing over things that are out of outside of your realm of control and it's time to change the the direction of your thoughts right it's time to distract yourself with something something that's not going to create more problems for you right like don't go don't go drinking if you know that you're prone to making mistakes when you're drunk, you know. But, you know, distract yourself with other things like taking nature walks or uh, art or, you know, just hanging out with friends. You know, getting yourself outside your head, you know, doing something that is productive for you in the right ways. Alright, what else do you need to know? We've got the Knight of Pentacles. I do see a slow moving offer coming towards you, right? This is something that, <laughs> it's almost like it shows up very last minute um, to kind of rescue you a little bit here. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowing moving, the slowest moving knight in the entire deck. He's all dressed up, ready to go, but he's taking his dear sweet fucking time, right? <laughs> he's, taking his time so i do see a positive like offer or opportunity coming to you it might be taking its time though it might be a slow moving thing but don't don't lose like uh don't lose hope hope is the most divine part of a human mind i think hope Helps you to overcome shit that you never thought possible. Um, hope has changed the world. Several times over. And it will continue to do so. So don't underestimate that either. Right? It's not just cheesy. It's actually like 
change the fucking world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at Martin Luther King Jr. Malcolm X. Those are my boys, you know. <laughs> Look at uh, Betty White. <laughs> you know, people who've been painfully hopeful in their lives and just seeing how, how far that's gotten them. How far that's, that's moved to the world. at life as like it's defeated you. Look at life like it's a video game and you're just going through another challenge, right? These challenges are like in video games. If if everything was so easy peasy, <laughs> lemon squeezy, then like they wouldn't be fun at all, would they? Same goes for life. If you had no challenges, no obstacles, no nothing to counter all the good times, then it would be so boring, right? I mean, the Truman Show is an excellent example of this. <laughs> like, he got, like, the day-to-day, -day, like, complacency got to him to the point where he had to seek out the truth, no matter how much turmoil that cost him, no matter how hard that was, how challenging that was. He couldn't trust anybody around him. And he had to, he had to use everything, all of his willpower, just to get to that outcome, you know. So, here's what Kali has to say to you. Kalika Tantrika. Kali overcomes karma, realigns us with our path when we have veered off course, reverses the momentum of negativity and detaches draining energy cords restoring us to full vitality it may seem like your will is being thwarted or you are not getting what you want but the goddess knows what she is doing her actions will benefit you trust sometimes the way that you want things to be and the way that things are meant to be are very different things right and sometimes what the universe wants for you is so much better and would be so much more beneficial to you in your life than what you want for you. So trust that. You know? Anywho, this is what I have for you. Namaste. I love you all and I will see you soon.